Coming up on the list, we help you negotiate a better salary, try a taste of the Mediterranean, and it's totally like the 60s and 70s. Step out in style with a vintage look. I love platform shoes. That's always my go-to. Plus, why E.T. is still flying high after 40 years. I'll be right here. But first, how to save money when you rent a car. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. The price of renting a car these days has gone way up. And on top of that base price, the rental places offer options that can add up fast. So we're looking at how to rent a ride without paying more than you should. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. Renting a car? Don't get taken for a ride by the barrage of sneaky charges. There are a lot of ways to get around fees that they tend to tack on that can drive up the cost of a rental. Benjamin Preston, Autos reporter for Consumer Reports, shares some ways to avoid getting nickel and dime. Before you return your car, think about fuel surcharges. Rental car places tend to be all clustered in the same place usually, especially if it's near an airport. And there'll be gas stations there too. And they can be more expensive than some that are a few miles away. So either give yourself plenty of extra time and check apps like Gas Buddy or AAA, or be ready to pay the piper. You have to decide what kind of person you are. Are you gonna be the person who's showing up at the last minute and you're not gonna have time to fill up because you're like, oh my God, I gotta catch my flight. If that's the case, you'll get hit with a fuel surcharge. I've returned cars with half a tank that I was supposed to return full and I'm like, whoops, and then they tack on 60 or $100. You could also go with the prepaid fuel option. They'll set it at more or less market rates. It might be on the high side a little bit. But if you don't return the tank empty, you're paying for gas you don't use. And that's your money in their pocket. To avoid another toll on your wallet, consider toll transponders. People who are coming from areas where maybe they don't have to pay tolls so much can be surprised by the fact that you have to pay tolls in places like New York and LA and San Francisco. Some have cashless tolling. Where you can just go through, they record it on a license plate. This isn't a penalty fee, it's the toll. However, the problem is that some rental car companies will ding you on that and they sort of paint you into a corner where you have to use their transponders. Daily costs for transponders can average around five bucks. And you can look at the routes you're gonna be traveling and if you can avoid tolls, then don't get the transponder and don't go over toll bridges. Finally, avoid additional insurance. The extra insurance is a pure money maker for the rental car company. If you already have a vehicle policy, you can call and make sure you're probably gonna have coverage through either your credit card or your regular car insurance. And if you do opt for the extra insurance, their fees differ from company to company. And of course, it heavily depends upon where you are. Some areas have higher insurance rates because they're more accident prone. It can almost double the amount that you're gonna pay for the rental. Steering clear of rental car fees is at the top of the list. Adding fun to your fashion without spending a lot is easier than you might think. Just go retro. Teresa Strasser showing off some 70s flair with the help of a TikTok stylist. The 70s brought high gas prices, iconic rock and roll, and some wild fashion. And these days, it's easy to recreate that rebellious vibe from yesteryear. TikTok influencer Lily Lurex serves up vintage outfits to her 78,000 followers each day. But she found her fashion inspiration from a couple of generations back her grandparents. Being around them was like, it kind of rubbed off on me. I would go on road trips with my grandpa and we'd be playing like CCR in the car. So as I got older, I learned to really appreciate that music and it started kind of affecting my style. And she's here to show us how to nail that style with an easy to build outfit. It starts at the top. It's always super fun to just have a band tee and you can base your look off of that. With my queen shirt, I wanna add like my flares and my big sleeves. It's very Freddie Mercury. Vintage jackets and coats level it up. And this is my Penny Lane, almost famous yes. coat. I love the whole like groupie aesthetic. Oh. Groupie? We are not groupies. This is Penny Lane, man. Show some respect. Next up, 
Step back in time with cool shoes and boots. I love platform shoes. That's always my go-to. They were like a staple for 70s glam rock, and that is my all-time favorite genre of music. I love go-go boots. I love just anything that's like boom. These are my shoes. Lily says jewelry and accessories can make that outfit pop. The next items to add to your rocking outfit. I love just like big jewelry that's like in your face. Like I have all my big rings. I love like wearing my big cross. It makes me feel like I'm a part of Black Sabbath. And I love a good feather boa too. And when it comes to shades, big and bold is the only choice. It makes me feel like Elton John. We'll wrap with sourcing for vintage items and it's totally doable on almost any budget. My favorite thing to do is to go to like estate sales and garage sales. I've always loved thrifting, but as of like more recently, it's become a little more expensive. She says eBay is also a good choice. In the end, it's all about the feeling. How does this rock and roll look make you feel? It's my passion and so when I feel like I can dress like some of my favorite like rock idols, it just makes me feel so good about myself. Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Yeah, exactly. Joan Jett, love her. Lily's TikTok and Instagram are chock full of outfits and ideas. Check her out on the links below. Nailing the hip glam rock fashion of the 60s and 70s, TikTok style. Inflation is hitting hard, so a lot of us could use a raise right about now. But the thought of walking into the boss's office to ask for one makes most of us cringe. So Hattie D. Jamal talked to a negotiation expert for advice on how to pump up that paycheck. If you ever thought of asking for more pay at work, you know it can be nerve wracking. The best negotiators view negotiation as a problem solving process. Simon Horton, author of Change Their Mind, Six Practical Steps to Persuade Anyone, Anytime. First piece of advice on getting that bump, open in a way that gets your boss's attention. Typically we put our request, I deserve a pay rise, why? Well, because I did this and I did this and I did this. And they didn't care about that. For a start, you've already done it. It's in the bank as far as they're concerned. Externally, you need to appear as though you are serious about leaving. Now your boss is gonna take you seriously. He says you have to be willing to walk away. At least know the market that you can talk about that in an informed way. They're gonna think, oh, maybe he is gonna leave. Right, let's talk about that pay raise then. Once your boss has taken your request seriously, it's time to ask for a raise that's fair. You know, you can't ask for a million percent pay rise, but you can ask for something that the market would suggest you're worth. So do that market research, find out what somebody with your job title and your number of years experience in your industry would earn, and then you can ask for that and you are being demonstrably fair. Now because you're being demonstrably fair, they have to be demonstrably fair in return. And if not, then you can challenge that. Which brings us to Simon's last tip, get creative. It could be that you link your pay to some agreed performance related measurable. If I do bring in an extra $50,000 worth of sales in, then I deserve an extra $5,000 pay for that month. He says it could even be something that isn't pay related. Maybe it's you want to work from home or you get health insurance or membership of the gym or whatever it may be. Just try and bring your creativity to find possibilities that both sides are happy with and so you get that pay raise. Get the boss to give you more bucks with these tips. Still to come on the list. You sure this is diet food? Oh yeah, absolutely. Try a tasty way to lose weight. I might be on this diet for the rest of my life. Plus, find out what kids really think. You have to stand up and do what is right for this planet. Yeah! And why Conan still looks great for his age. That is strength, boy. That is power. Next on the list. We're back. Five times in a row, the Mediterranean diet has been named the diet of the year, perhaps because of the wide variety of tasty and healthful ingredients it includes. But all those choices 
can mean it's a bit overwhelming. So Christina has a few Mediterranean recipes to get you started. The toughest part of any weight loss regimen is staying excited about it. Enter the Mediterranean diet. Most people fail in their diet because they get tired of the same old grind, you know, day in, day out. We hit up Basil Osmani, co-founder and owner of Pita Jungle, for some recipes that'll make your taste buds as happy as your scale. Starting with the High Plains Drifter Garbanzo Bowl. It's a take on a traditional Mediterranean dish with garbanzo beans and a crema sauce, except it's made of Greek yogurt, okay. not heavier stuff, and infused with Southwest flavors. Other ingredients include tomato, cucumber, celery, red onion, bell pepper, and for a little fire, jalapeno. And then, Give it a good mix. like everything else in the med diet, olive oil, I like to use fresh lemon, a little red wine vinegar, Fold in sliced avocados and plate with pita chips and crema. So this is basically Greek yogurt, okay. tahini sauce, and a little spice, you know, all spice, a little garlic, salt, pepper. That is so delicious. I could have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Are you sure this is diet food? Oh yeah, absolutely. Next, we're making a Southwest tabbouleh salad. It's so refreshing, so nutritious. This zesty concoction's all about parsley, quinoa, cilantro, onions, tomatoes, and jalapenos. It is super nutritious, it's loaded with vitamins. So instead of just making your plate look pretty, it can make your body look healthy. It sure does. Add olive oil and fresh lemon juice and stir. If you like to garnish those little avocados on top, okay. there you go. And how about take my sticks, throw them on top like randomly. And voila, you are ready to dig in. Lastly, we're stepping up your protein with the lentil fatouche salad. Start by mixing two cups of cooked lentils and one cup of rice. All right, so this is phase one. Now let's get the other bowl and let's build the salad. Which is like a healthy all-star team. Romaine lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers, radishes, onions, and mint. Bring it home with sumac and pita chips. Add the lentil rice mix and garnish with caramelized onions. I might be on this diet for the rest of my life and be completely happy with that. Making a diet a feast, Mediterranean style. For the full list of recipes, head to thelisttv.com. They say a smile a day keeps the doctor away, and these positive stories will help. They're your weekly reminder that kindness wins. First up is Julian Shapiro Barnum, the creator and host of a wholesome video series that gives us unfiltered takes on some of life's most complex questions. Why do you think you were put on this planet? Um, to be kind to everyone. To everyone? I guess. He started Recess Therapy last year and has racked up over 2 million Instagram followers and over 300,000 on his YouTube channel. In his videos, he interviews New Yorkers aged 2 to 9 on some serious topics like the economy and the environment. We're going to do better moving forward, right? You have to stand up and do what is right for this planet! The world would be better if, just, if adults just listen to kids. My kids tell me the same thing, and you know what, they're probably right. At number two, a psychology student who uses her TikTok platform to raise awareness of the connection between cleaning and mental health. Because as human beings, our senses naturally take in all of our surrounding stimuli, whether we like it or not. Rogan Ingram goes by not the worst cleaner, and on her videos, she shows how she deep cleans the homes of people in unlivable situations all free of charge. Please know if you are struggling, your self-worth is never dependent on the cleanliness of your home. It's always okay to reach out for help and it doesn't make you any less of a person. Her before and afters have gone viral, helping her gain about 4.2 million followers. Because I don't want to make cleaning content that's just satisfying or motivational. It's about having a comfortable home that you deserve. Amazing. And last on our kindness wins list, a teacher in Kentucky who spreads joy in his community with some unique works of art. I try to find things that a lot of people can relate to. I try not to, you know, to do just things that are hot right now. Tyler Watts is known as Post-it Picasso for his large, colorful murals made entirely with Post-it notes. He began creating these in 2018, and his art has been displayed in local businesses, colleges, libraries, and more. Sometimes I almost run out of ideas, but, uh, but I try to find things that kids can relate to uh, just as much as adults can. His pieces can take anywhere from 1,000 to up to 10,000 Post-its. It's like 
thousands of little reminders that art is awesome. And those are three stories that show kindness wins. Coming up, we take you back to the 80s to celebrate some movies turning 40 this year, including a Steven Spielberg directed classic. Stay with us. We have a quick list of ways to be a good role model for others with physician and wellness expert, Dr. Gail Myers. When you help others, it makes for a better community, a better life. First, emphasize what you've learned from your mistakes. When people realize that we all make mistakes, it makes it a lot easier to just be ourselves. Second, encourage community service. Bringing your gifts to the community adds value where there's need. And third, praise them. Genuine compliments and praise to friends and family helps them to be reassured. For more list tips, head to thelisttv.com. Welcome back. And on today's watch list in the world of movies, the 80s was a great decade, producing more than its share of blockbusters and classics. Jackie Denker's turning back the clock 40 years to celebrate some films from 1982 that still have us on the edge of our seats. Like fine wine, great films get better and better as we watch them again and again. Happy 40th birthday. No, I'm not celebrating anything, but we have some incredible films that were born in 1982. Talking about some of his favorite movies from 1982 is Rotten Tomatoes contributing editor, Mark Ellis. Starting with E.T., the extraterrestrial. I'll be right. Here. Steven Spielberg did direct a project about an extraterrestrial accurately titled E.T. E oh, no. This critically acclaimed movie not only went on to become the highest grossing movie of 82, but also won four Academy and two Golden Globe Awards. <sighs> Film stars a young Henry Thomas and an even younger Drew Barrymore. <laughs> You can stream E.T. the Extraterrestrial on video on demand. Up next, Conan the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian first crushed his enemies in American theaters May 14th, 1982. This cult classic catapulted Arnold Schwarzenegger into Hollywood mainstream and won Sandal Bergman a Golden Globe Award in the new Star of the Year category. That is strength, boy. That is power. Arnold and Sandal Bergman's body types were so unique and singular, production couldn't find stunt doubles that would pull it off. So Arnold and Sandow just ended up having to do all the stunts themselves. You can watch Conan the Barbarian on video on demand. And finally, First Blood. Rambo, John Jay. October 22nd, 1982 brought us First Blood, the story of a Vietnam vet who returns home to find that the fighting for him is just beginning. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. This smashing hit spawned a franchise consisting of four sequels, an animated television series, a comic book series, several video games, and an Indian remake. It was the first major American blockbuster released in China. They do First Blood. First Blood is available on HBO Max, celebrating the 40th anniversary of some iconic movies on the watch list. And all three of those classic movies turning 40 have stars that everyone can do impressions of. Think about EDT, ouch. Stallone, you get the idea. And if you're feeling hungry for some takeout, you're gonna wanna hear this next hack before placing that order. Last on our list is next. Welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list. So you know how review sites work. Five stars, that's the gold standard. And anything under four stars, well, that makes business owners nervous because users can set up a filter to only see places that have four plus stars. Well, according to TikTok user Freddie Wong, if you set that filter up on Yelp, you'll be missing out on the best 
Chinese food. The easiest way to find authentic Chinese food, assuming you're living in a major metropolitan area, is to go on Yelp and look for restaurants with three and a half stars. Exactly three and a half, not three, not four. Three and a half stars is the sweet spot for authentic Chinese food. The video's racked up millions of views, and he's getting overwhelming support in the comments. So. What's going on here? Well, according to Freddie, this has to do with differences in American and Asian food culture. Tipping's not really a thing in China, so servers aren't buttering you up for that 20%, which means they're not gonna come by and chit chat and ask how you're enjoying your meal or top off your Coke. In fact, if you need your server again after the food's dropped off, you'll probably have to flag him or her down. The waiters are not gonna pay attention to you. They're gonna be rude, but it's gonna taste better. So a lot of American Yelp users wanna ding the restaurant for poor service, but the food is just too good to go on blast with a one or two star rating, so bam, you wind up at exactly 3.5 stars for better Chinese food than a five star rated restaurant. And yeah, now I'm hungry for Chinese food, so I'm gonna put this series to the test right about now. That's what's last on our list. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Tomorrow on The List, check out what's on the menu. Oh my gosh. From high end steaks. That's melting your mouth. Yes to a healthful snack. You bite into one and you're immediately gonna get that sweet kick. Ingredients you can make yourself. You can make homemade apple cider vinegar and it's really easy. And a glass of bubbly to wrap it up. You see the bubbles, sign of a quality champagne. Grab a seat at the table and see what's on the menu tomorrow on The List.